so Israel leaves at Sinai and we should choose a leader and go back. That was the people's attitude. And uh, we have seen Exodus and then conquest. There we have seen Joshua's leadership skills and his great encountering the heathen nations. God said, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. I saw to their forefathers. And Israel and Joshua conquers, conquer promised land. There we had an in-depth study. And coming back to the story of David, prior to that, we had a cycle of people's disobedience in Judges. They forgot God. They served other gods. God handed over to riders. Judges delivered them. And judge died and they forgot God again. We have seen the cycle time and again, time and again in Judges. From there we have seen in Judges we had an in-depth study on Samson, Gideon. Of course we haven't studied Deborah, but uh, time permits we will do it later. We have seen the strategy of God, how God uses people. I have been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. In Judges, we have seen about God's deliverance and the story continued, the Old Testament purview. We are still in the introduction. There we have come to United Kingdom. In this United Kingdom, we study three classes on David, a man after all his heart. Prior to that, we had an in-depth study on Samuel, the judge and the prophet. God said, appoint a king to lead us. The people said, appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. You know, these people haven't acknowledged theocracy. Theocracy means God, the kingdom of God. God as a king to that nation. You know, God was angry because they have not rejected the prophet, but they have rejected God himself because they wanted to have a human king like any other heathen people. You now God was very angry. As a result, God instructed Samuel to go and appoint a king. Israel demanded a king. They have rejected me as their king. You know, when, God, when people rejected, God was angry and God commanded Samuel to go and anoint a king. There comes in the United Kingdom, the first king, Saul, as the first king to the people of Israel. He ruled this uh, the a kingdom you have and then you have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel there we had an in-depth study on King Saul Samuel anoints David to be their next king because the Lord looks at the heart not the outward circumstances Saul was always giving an outward spirituality a pseudo spirituality and he rejected God. He did not wait for God's time and he did not wait for God's prophet and he depended on his own strength and he depended on his human wisdom strategy and his human structure. As a result, God rejected him. God sent prophet Samuel to anoint David as the king. The Lord looks at the heart. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. 
And David say, uh, slays Goliath, slays Goliath, King Saul tries to kill David. You know, all the time he was after David. And uh, there we have seen 1 uh, Samuel and 2 Samuel. We had an in-depth study on that. And uh, King David comes into the scene. There we stop, start, stop yesterday. You know, from here, we move forward to the uh, second lesson. King David, part four. Father, we thank you today. We pray that you please have mercy on us to experience your grace. There is some disturbance with this technology today, but I pray that you help us. Father, we thank you once again for your goodness and for your faithfulness. Thank you for these of my friends. We had an in-depth study and we glanced through what happened in the previous classes. Now we need to get into the actual class for a couple of minutes. I pray that this system should not give any trouble. And I pray that this class should go well in a couple of minutes. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Two more friends join. Let me keep them in mute and we continue the class. Here it is. Uh, the file already opened. King David. We had an in-depth study on King David. Uh, Rajkumar, can you see the screen? Yeah, seeing. Okay, everything is fine? Fine, fine. Okay, King David, sins and suffers. There we stopped yesterday and we glanced through what happened in the past uh, classes for the friends who entered. And now we progress. King David had an amazing intimate relationship with God and his attitude of forgiving his enemies. And uh, there King David sins with Bathsheba's Second Samuel chapter 11, where we, have, we could read, David brings Bathsheba to his bed. Chapter 11 was one to four. He sees how beautiful she is when, she, when he sees her bathing. He sends for her even though he knows she is married. He has sex with her and she later goes back to home. We, are, uh, we all are familiar with this story. The story continued to cover his sin. David murders Uriah to hide his adultery. To hide one sin, he commits another greater sin and uh, he tries to escape, but he was caught. Bathsheba is pregnant now. So David calls Uriah from battle. Uriah refuses repeated efforts to send him to Bathsheba. I know David tried to cover his sin, but the more he tried to cover, the more it was uncovered. That's the nature of sin. The more we try to cover, the more it will be uncovered and God brings into the light. David sends Uriah with a note for Joab to set him up to die. Since he's not obeying, since he's not able to cover the sin, he opened another way to kill, uh, to annihilate. Uriah, David sends Uriah with a note for Joab to set him up to die. And there we see their child is born, but David, David's actions are evil to the Lord. And Nathan convicts David of his sin. You know, it's an amazing, the prophet Nathan, not afraid of the palace, not afraid of the king. He spoke 
as God commanded him without deleting any iota of the truth. He tells about a rich man taking a neighbor's pet lamb. David is outraged until Nathan says, you are the man. You know, it's an amazing. He went to the palace fearlessly and he communicated the truth in a way that it can be communicated. We can learn, we can learn a spiritual lesson here. We need to learn the art of communicating the truth to the people whom we are serving. And today we are surrounded by neighbors and we need to communicate the truth in a way that they can understand. David repeats and Nathan pronounces three punishments. And the sword will never depart from David's house. A member of his household. Pardon? Oh, screen, you are not able to see the screen? How it happened? I don't know. Let me see it again. Um, so we are able to see the screen, but uh, it's showing only there is no slide moment. Oh, lesson four and lesson four and eight again. Let me see. Open now. The screen is shared, but uh, we are unable to see the, your presentation. Can you see now? Not yet, no. One second. Yeah, it is starting. Uh, starting. Give me one second. Then. I assume that you are able to see this. No, no. One second. I will close everything and I'll start again. This uh, PPT has some problem. Hope this will work this time. I think there is some disturbance happened today. We need to find the civil one. I feel under the light of these issues, God is working. Okay, can you see now? Yes, King David, part four, and Okay, now. Okay, can you see now? Yes, yes. David uh, suffers from yes, okay, right. Okay, please excuse me. Sorry for all the confusion. Hope this will go now. Okay, David sins with Bersaba. Is it clear now? Yes, clear. Okay, David brings Bathsheba to his bed and David murders Uriah to his adultery to hide his adultery and Nathan convicts David of his sin. There we stop. Let's progress. David suffers for his sin. We read it in 2 Samuel chapter 12 and 13. David 
and Bathsheba's first child dies. We all are familiar with this. God cannot tolerate sin. David prays and fasts, hoping the Lord will separate the child. When servants tell him the child has died, he returns to life. He shall not return to me, but I shall, shall go to him. He mourned. And then he and Bathsheba have another son, Solomon. And David takes the victor, victor's uh, honor in Ammon. And Joab brings him, uh, him, brings him to Ammon's royal city. Once all is one. He gets massive Ammonite crown and exterminates cities. Uh, David's son rapes his own sister. We all are familiar with the story, but the truth I wanted to communicate, Jesus said, whatever you sow, you will reap the consequence. And David's consequence has been seen in his family. He did it in privacy and uh, his son did it in public on the terrace. And David's son rapes his own sister. Ammon lusts for his half-sister Tamar. Jonadab plots to get her for him. Ammon deceives and rapes her, then hates her and sends her away. You know what the spiritual truth we learn here? Our family will have a spiritual enlightenment, spiritual strength when I head of the family, if I really lead, lead the life with the integrity, honesty, and truthfulness and inside purity. David, the sin reflected in his family. And whatever we, of course, God forgives us sin. The truth here is Jesus forgives us. But the consequence of sin will continue in our lives. I'm not making a theology of it here. Like Jesus, uh, some, uh, a person comes and asks, Jesus, who sinned for his consequence, for his uh, blindness? Who is the cause? Is it his father or grandfather? I'm not laying a foundation saying that your sin will reflect on your children in a different form. But what I wanted to say here, sin cannot be hidden. David is angry, but uh, her full brother Absh Absalom hates Ammon. You know, we know only one side of the story, David, the success as a success story. Last three classes, we had such a great success story. But even his, uh, there, is a, there is a terrific agony, terrific encounter in the family. Even we cannot pronounce some of them. David's son kills his rapist brother. You know, he, he had a murder outside in the battlefield. The, the murder entered into the palace, into his own house, into his own clan. Sin is a terrible master and it finds a willing servant in human body. You know, we cannot hide. Coming back again, you know, today I see a lot of mission leaders you know, they, the way that they accumulate wealth, they, the way they misuse their power to hide their sinful nature, the schemes like here, David, how he schemed. You know, I have seen with my own eyes how it reflected sin in their own family. You now here, the same thing we see in David's life. Absalom achieves a cup. Job sends a wise man to David. She Sows David, he should reconcile himself to his own son. David allows Joab to bring Absalom back. He says Absalom can return, but not the palace. I'm concluding, coming back to conclusion. Absalom returns after two years forces reconciliation. Absalom plots against David. He makes 
grand entrance at the city gates. He steals hearts and wishes out loud for judgeship. You know, again, the sin has come into his own family and David had to run away from his kingdom for his life. You know, God gave him rest from all sorts of trouble and he brought him back to the kingdom. But no, the sin chases him out. The same principle even today. If we have a peaceful environment, sin chases us out. Absalom claims the throne in Hebron. David flees from Jerusalem again. David flees from Jerusalem again. He leaves to spare people for the city. Absalom enters Jerusalem. David accepts the humility of exit. He accepted him and he humbled himself and he went back again to exile. You know, he went back again for his life. Ziba falsely claims the prophecy of Mephi Mosheth. David stops his nephew from killing Heckler. And Absalom sleeps with David's wives in public. What a nonsense it is. Even we cannot digest this. Absalom sleeps with his father David's wives in public on the terrace. The God says, you did sin in private, but uh, it will be dispelled in public. When I, read, when I meditate on these things, I get scared to death. If you do sin in private, God dispels in public. Because one day it will be caught. You will be caught. Sin cannot be hidden. Jesus clearly says in New Testament, your sin will catch you. Your sin will bring you out. That's what happened in David's life. You know, if we need to have an exegetical study and family life, we need to study David. A lot of spiritual truths. Now, we have seen last three classes how God blessed David and how giant he was and what a great man he was. But here, a great man, a man who killed Goliath, giant, he could not kill the sin within his own life inside the palace. The death of Absalom. Uh, friends helped David escape his son. Hosea gets word to David to flee further from Absalom. David escapes from Mahanaim to Transjordan. Absalom continues to pursue his father. A royal subjects in uh, Mahanaim provides, provide for David and the, uh, the rival troops fight in the forest. David re reluctantly stays behind and sends out generals. He says, deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. Absalom's forces are uh, slaughtered in the forest. David grieves over Absalom's death. You know, again, David grieves his son Absalom's death. His wives were uh, raped on the terrace. His, sons, uh, his son died. His own daughter was raped by his own son. You know, his family, a chaos and confusion. Uh, you know, when people see such kind of chaos and confusion, what they would have thought. And this is, this is the reality. Nobody exposes the reality of the family inside. If today the mission leaders of families can be exposed like David's family, we learn the spiritual truth. We don't worship them as demigods, babas and gurus. And today Christianity has a lot of babas and gurus. The Christian gurus, the babas. They all the time, they speak their own success stories. But they, nobody talk about the inner stories. 
as a mission leader, as I deal with these issues, I know a lot of stories. Mission leaders booking hotels and sleeping with women in the hotels. Outside, no, such a great giant. But what to do with the poor pastors, the innocent workers, they survive with their 1,000, 2,000 drops from their table, like a Lazarus, eating and surviving from the fallen biscuit pieces. Both of them died, but when they went into the heaven, the Lazarus was there at the bosom of Abraham, but this rich man was in hell. I'm not making a statement again. Please forgive me. Most of these mission leaders, the so-called Christian leaders, they will be in hell. Because of the activities. Why Christianity has not spread in India? We always blame our Hindu friends. Nonsense. We should not blame our friends around. It is of the strategy, the wickedness, and the sin that prevail in the name of church growth. You know, the church growth philosophy has ruined our country in the context. That's a different story. Maybe when God gives a time, we will understand the strategy of witnessing the gospel. David grieves over Absalom's death again. And David comes back, not like mission leaders of today. He was transparent, he accepted the sin, and he came back and he allowed God to work in his life to get the punishment. You know, he accepted God's punishment. He went through that shame, humiliation, and he accepted, he repented. And if only today the mission leaders and the Christian workers can repent like David, you know, India will be in a different shape. Christianity will be in a different shape. Today, if we say the word Christian, it's such a horrible word. People are not able to accept that. The word Christian became a nuisance in the market. Once upon a time, it was not so. In the pre-independent era, Christians were known for contributing to the society. People who live with integrity, honesty, and holiness, but not so today. Why? There is no repentance. There are, there, we need to have this kind of call. David grieves over Absalom's death, Joab violently killed Joab, Absalom in the forest. Joab finds him stuck by the neck in the tree, sticks a sword through his heart and he kills. And others uh, finish Absalom off with spares. David is inconsolable over his son, son's violence death. And we are almost done. Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, would I have died instead of you? Would I have died instead of you? You, oh, Absalom, my son, my son. That was the nature of David. David returns as the king. After all the suffering, he took back shame, guilt, and repentance, consequences of sin he took. Then he returns as a king. God always brings, brings back to us to the same position, provided we accept that humiliation, we accept that uh, uh, the sinful nature, and we repent because turn to God and rejoice in hope. That's what we learn from King David. He accepted all sinful nature and uh, he, he came back again to the palace and the rest is a history. This the repentance gives back the position, the rest will become a history. Uh, that's what we learned from King David. Of course, he was a fallen man. He did a lot of sins. Job gets back, gets David to uh, retake his public role. His grief puts distance between him and his supporters. Job agrees that he must show he supports his supporters. And people push and show support for David and David is uh, gracious to friends and foes. The late supporters from Israel wants to help escort David and then David survives the rebellion of Sheva and then uh, let's conclude this session. So that's what we see my friends. We have seen David all through the text 
and we have concluded and here is a challenge we all have the inborn tendency of evil but we need to come back to god again to the same position and david went through all that process and uh, he came to hebron he had such a great success and he fell in sin to cover that sin he did some more activities and he was thrown out from the kingdom he went back again to exile and he came back with the repenting spirit today what i want to urge you repent and rejoice come back to god come to god and rejoice there is a great happiness in in god in this lockdown time let's examine our hearts let's come back to god come back to the same position that god has given us uh, let's uh, close our eyes and pray and i conclude with a word of prayer later we can have a discussion if you have any questions father we thank you today though we had initial disturbances and distractions with the technology you gave us a peaceful environment where we could study glance through the david and his life story and the old testament survey up to david father we surrender ourselves to you we ask you to encourage us motivate us help us to come back and rejoice in hope i thank you for all of these my friends bless them and encourage them and empower them with your spirit and they may enjoy the goodness that comes from you bless their family life and bless their children in jesus precious name i pray amen Thank you, friends, for your patience and uh, for your amazing patience, bearing with me, even though there were some initial challenges. I think I need to answer uh, Joshua's question. Yesterday, he raised a question. Let me answer the question. Yesterday, yes. Joshua asked me a question. Yes, I know. All right. Why did God stuck? Ozaya to death. I'm unmuting. When you ask a question, you can uh, unmute yourself. I'm muting everyone. Right? Why did God stuck Ozaya to death? If you read in First Chronicle chapter 15, verse 2, then David said, "No one may carry the ark of God but the Levites, for the Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of God." and to minister before him forever. In that context, yesterday already I gave the glimpses, in that Old Testament context, especially when God came down to live on earth, because that was the weakness of the people, they wanted God with them in a particular form. And God instructed to have this Ark of the Covenant. In that covenant, when God gave a lot of instructions here is given, only Levites are allowed to enter into that. So, only the Levites are allowed to come and carry the dark. Uzzah doesn't belong to that Levite clan. And also, First Chronicle 15 verse 13 clearly says, The Lord our God broke out against us because we did not consult him about the proper order. No, they haven't consulted God for a proper order. And uh, especially in chapter 15, First Chronicles again, 25 and 26 says, God helped the Levites. Only Levite, Levites are allowed to carry that. Even God instructed very clearly that uh, nobody should come near to the mountain. When, uh, when Moses, uh, God gave instruction to Moses, only Moses was allowed to come to that uh, mountain. And even when Moses came down from the uh, mountain, people were not able to see Moses' face. They said, please cover your face. The glory of God was such heavy on them. So this, uh, the Ark of the Covenant has been filled with the glory of God. 
when Uzziah came near, it was not God killed him. So we need to understand the language. Uh, even in the Old Testament, uh, in the New Testament, the, uh, the anthropomorphic language was used. Not like, for example, uh, we read in the newspaper saying that if some bomb blast happened in Hyderabad, people say, uh, maybe Pakistan's hand was on this. Pakistan doesn't have a hand like this. It's an anthropomorphic language. So here, it is not God killed Uzziah. Uzziah came to the glory of God. He was not able to have the, 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 the glory of the Lord consumed him. Hope you, you got my point. Uh, Joshua, you are there somewhere? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm hearing Anna. So, any other uh, doubt further on that? Uh, no, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much, Anna. Yeah. For clarification. It was a particular order God has given in that particular context. Now, the priesthood of all believers. Now, we believe everybody comes under a Levite community. Uh, there is no only particular community need to deal uh, God's uh, thing. Uh, maybe, yeah. Hope you got it, right? Any yes. other question or something you want to contribute?